So my friend Tomas and I are riding from Prague to Vienna on the Prague to Vienna Greenways cycle path. So Brian told me it would be a really nice trip. Just easy riding, discovering new landscapes, uh, beer tasting and probably uh, tasting some wine in Moravia. I'm looking for a real challenge. Everything I read online said it's 385 kilometers. I think we're gonna try and do about 100 kilometers per day, which will not leave as much time to do anything else. And we're probably gonna be pretty exhausted at the end of each day. I'm excited. Uh, I think we will have a lot of fun, uh, just bikepacking, soaking up the local culture. What's not to like? Uh, should be a nice vacation. He has no idea. There is no way he would go on this trip if he knows how hard it was going to be. In less than 15 kilometers, we had left the urban city center of Prague, and now is a good time to thank the sponsor of this video, Topeak. When they heard about my idea to bike on one of Europe's most popular cycle paths, they insisted I test out their gear. Topeak fitted me out with their latest gear designed especially for bikepacking or as they like to say, built for adventure. We kept riding further into the countryside. Around the 40 kilometer mark, we decided to enjoy one of the Czech Republic's most refreshing traditions. But we couldn't dilly-dally. We had a tight schedule to follow, so we would ride another 20 kilometers before stopping again for what was either a late lunch or an early dinner. Czech ribs isn't the lightest of meals, but it is too good to say no to. We continued cycling south as we were now racing the sun. The views were magnificent. I was relishing the thought of riding through scenery like this for the next few days. I can't stress enough how great it is to go on these multi-day adventures. Ooh, so... Our late start is definitely kicking us in the pants right now. We really didn't get off uh, Prague until about midday and it is now 7 p.m. and we have probably at least two hours of riding, which could possibly mean half an hour to an hour in the dark. But Topeak provided me with this amazing 500 lumen light. You wouldn't even believe this thing. It's like a headlight from a car. So hopefully I get to check that out and give you my thoughts on it. But uh, keep riding and uh, hopefully we make it to the end point and can keep on schedule with the four day goal. So over and out. I hope we are closing to our final destination because it was a hard ride, but very nice one. Nice one, yeah. I think we got around 20 kilometers in front of us, so let's go. We kept riding and would enjoy every second of the remaining sunlight. How about the sunset, Tomas? Nice. Before we knew it, the sun was gone and it was nearly pitch dark. So glad to have the lights, mainly for making it way easier to follow the path, but also to help cars notice us. Just got to our accommodation after riding about an hour and a half, two hours in the dark, but these lights have worked out amazing. We made it. Well, we're going to bed. On day one, we rode from Prague to the small town of Stare Mitrovice covering approximately 91 kilometers with an elevation gain of over 1,200 meters and a total riding time of nearly five hours and 50 minutes. Good morning, day two. Yesterday we did a little over 90 kilometers, hoping today to do about 100. My knee is a little sore, legs are a little tired, but I'm hoping we can push through it. Also got in late last night, so instead of camping, we chose to stay at this pretty nice pension that was right on the way. But tonight, the plan is to camp. So, let's get on the bikes. 
We packed up and got on the road. There is something that is so awesome about just riding all day. I really don't think there is a better way to explore. Bikepacking allows you to travel significantly more distance than hiking and with the option to bring more stuff. However, my favorite is to pack the least amount possible, saving you both time and energy. In the late afternoon, my good buddy Voita would come ride with us for a few hours. We would eventually reach the Cervena La Jota castle around sunset, took a 15 minute break to admire the enchanting structure and to rest our legs. We kept cycling almost another 20 kilometers before arriving to Yin Jrahuv Hradets. Here is where we parted ways with Voita, riding several more kilometers in the dark and then setting up our tent. On day two, we rode from Stare Mitrovice to just south of Yinjirahuv Hradets. We covered approximately 84 kilometers with an elevation gain of over 970 meters and a total riding time of nearly five hours and 50 minutes. Good morning. Got in pretty late last night. We set up the tent and we were super tired. So uh, we went to bed without saying goodbye, but it is a new day and we are going to start riding here shortly. We just need to put up the tent. But look at this sweet view we found. Oh, not too bad. We're just uh, about seven kilometers outside Yinjerhuv Haraditz. Yinjerhuv Haraditz. We got on the bikes and started cycling towards Vienna. How'd you sleep, Tomasz? Ah, oh, pretty well. Pretty well. My sleeping mattress is not so good as yours, but I'm fresh for next 100 kilometers. Any update? What do we got for today? Today, we should go through the Czech Canada, so the terrain should be a little bit hilly. But we are mountain bikers, right? <laughs> <laughs> Another beautiful day. Actually, today, Feels kind of hot compared to the other days, but got a pretty good sleep in the tent, but we really need to find somewhere to wash off yesterday's stink. And I broke two spokes in my rear tire, so uh, hopefully we'll find a bike shop along the way. The first couple hours were great riding a fair amount of climbing followed by relaxing downhills. When we reached Nova Bistrice, Tomas suggested we stop for another Czech specialty. Vitranik is my favorite sweet from this country. After, we would enter into Czech Canada, a beautiful area named because of its abundance of conifer trees. So right outside of Slavonice, we found our bathing facilities. We would ride into Slavonice, where we found a bike shop to repair my spokes. It wasn't long before we were back on the road enjoying what I like to call the magic hour. Wow, these views all around are spectacular. The landscape is stunning. Have a lot of fun, eating some great Czech food, trying out the beers, and just riding from sunrise to sunset. Can't think of things much better than this. Again, we would ride into total darkness, something that would have been impossible without the lights. 
On day three, we rode from just outside Yendrahuv Haraditz to Podharadi Nadi, covering approximately 78 kilometers with an elevation gain of over 965 meters and a total riding time of nearly five hours and five minutes. Will be a hot day today. Good morning from day four in the Prague Vienna Greenways tour. We have done about 253 kilometers so far. Day four, we're really hoping to do our first 100 kilometer day because we just found out some bad news. We have 170 more kilometers. We don't know how this happened. We were told it was 385 kilometers, but it now looks like there's an additional 35 to 40 kilometers. Somebody probably didn't do any planning. We did debate on saving some pace by taking a shortcut, but that would be cheating. We're gonna do the full 170, come on. An hour or so later, I would reach the very picturesque Vranov Nadiyi Chateau. If you have the time, I suggest taking a tour of this architectural and historical attraction. Next, we would pass by the Vranov Nadiyi Dam, a popular place for Czechs to go on vacation in the summer. And later, we would enter into the Podi National Park, which is one of only four national parks in the Czech Republic. Tomáš knew about another great place for us to take a swim, at the Podchobesem River. It just went from good to amazing. We just went through this awesome downhill Sorry, I did not film it, but we stopped right here. Amazing. S in the river. It was the best part, definitely. We had a quick descent to the river. This water is a little colder. I don't think I see any big rocks. We're gonna jump. Very similar to yesterday's water, with the exception of it being about five to 10 degrees Celsius colder. A little bit. <laughs> it's freezing. Ah. Woo, woo. But it's dope. Whoa. We dried off and kept pedaling, but it wasn't long before we were invited to sample some wine. We were in Moravia now, so it would be a faux pas not to at least try it. Today our legs felt really tired, so we decided to ride just a few more kilometers before calling it quits for the day. On day four, we rode from Podharadi Nadii to Yaroslavice, covering approximately 70 kilometers with an elevation gain of over 785 meters and a total riding time of nearly five hours and 15 minutes. Yesterday, we started getting pretty tired, slowly doing less and less each day. Yesterday, we only did 70 kilometers. Our body are feeling it. We just camped here in, where are we, Yaroslav? Yaroslav. Yaroslavice, we camped here, just on the side of some road, got a good night's sleep, it's 7.45 a.m. and I think we're about 110 kilometers still from Vienna, which means we probably won't even get there today, but we'll be able to leave early tomorrow on the first train back to Prague. Uh, that's if everything goes okay. We packed up the tent and got on the road. It was noticeably easier as we were out of the hills and had a lot less climbing to do. Day five has been treating us pretty good so far. Uh, it's a little overcast, but it's made the weather cool. 
There's a light breeze, but it's not as windy as yesterday. Thank goodness. Um, but yeah, we've uh, clocked about 30 kilometers almost. We're hoping to get the 100 today, but we haven't had any luck yet, but fingers crossed. Shortly after, we would arrive to the super charming town of Mikolov. Unfortunately, we were way behind schedule and didn't have time to fully soak up the culture, as Tomas puts it. So we kept surging forward. All right, we're coming up to the unofficial border. We are leaving the Czech Republic and entering into Austria. So far, riding in Austria was great, riding through some vineyards, among rolling hills and windmills. Right at dusk, we arrived to a small town with hopes of finding a hotel room for the night. Hello, we are searching for one room with two beds. Fingers crossed. On day five, we rode from Jaroslavice to Mistelbach. We covered approximately 90 kilometers with an elevation gain of over 780 meters and a total riding time of nearly five hours and 50 minutes. Day six or 5.5, hopefully. Bikes are packed. It is super early in the morning because we're trying to get all the way to Vienna. We have 60 plus kilometers and we're trying to catch the two 39 p.m. train can we make it i think we have enough time but you never know what the road has waiting for you today was our first sunrise ride of the trip it was stunning a little brisk but felt great it seemed like we were the only people on the bike trail in my future bike packing trips i will be sure to do more riding during sunrise it's such an amazing way to start the day. At around the halfway point, we decided to reward ourselves with a refreshing beer. The morale was high. We had a variety of perspectives. We did night ride. Today we did sunrise ride. We did sunset ride. We did a lot of different landscapes. All the night rides were pretty cool. Thanks to very good lights, we had a really, really adventurous experience. And I really liked the ride through the national park. Yeah, the, the landscape, the scenery was, it was amazing. We kept rolling through the hills, savoring the last kilometers of our epic journey. Since we have entered Austria, we have seen virtually zero signs for the Prague Vienna Greenways. And after much consideration, uh, after spending some time looking at the map, we've decided to follow the Eurovelo 9 all the way to Vienna. Uh, otherwise, we were just spending so much time trying to find it and uh, still not being fully sure that we were even on it. Eurovelo 9 gets there. We're gonna finish this almost 100 kilometers more than anticipated. But we're gonna do it. We're crushing it. What are we doing, Tomash? We are finishing the last part. Prague, Vienna. And we are on a greenway, which is called also Eurovelo, Eurovelo 9. <laughs> we soon ventured into a more urban setting, and our endpoint was within sight. On the final day, we covered approximately 70 kilometers with an elevation gain of over 425 meters and a total riding time of nearly 4 hours and 25 minutes. We averaged just over 80 kilometers per day and a total of 483 kilometers. I just made it to the Vienna train station. This 
video is officially finished. If you have any questions about biking the Prague to Vienna Greenways path, please leave them in the comment box below. Another huge thank you to the sponsor Topeak. I could not have done it without this amazing gear. I will have a video showing you the ultimate bike packing setup. Look out for that video. Until next time, safe travels. See you later. Don't leave yet. There's tons of great videos to keep watching. More importantly, did you subscribe yet?